Hey everyone, fast announcement before the video begins. Four years ago, myself, Christian Guzman, and Max Tuning all linked up and collaborated in Texas, and it was pretty epic. Four years later, this is happening again, this time with Masthetics thrown in the mix at Masthetics' brand new gym, Legion Iron, for their grand opening. And there's gonna be a few other badass lifters that are gonna show up too that you probably have all heard of, know, and love. So this is going to be epic. This is happening on September 29th for the grand opening. We're all linking up, training, filming, having a blast. So come. If I can fly my ass from Rhode Island over to New Mexico, you have no excuse not to make it. That's September 29th, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Legion Iron Gym. See you there. Now enjoy the video. Kicking off Monday at Ultimate Fitness in West Greenwich, Rhode Island, badass gym. And I'm doing box squats. I showed you in the last video where I talked about doing 500 pound squats every single week. I mentioned how I kind of lost my technique and positioning on the low bar squat because I haven't done it in a while. Box squats are amazing to help you get back into the rhythm of loading your posterior chain, breaking at the hips, sitting back into the squat a little bit more. See what happens is uh, with a normal squat, you break at the knees a little bit more, right? You let the knees come forward and you keep your hips underneath you because the bar position is higher up on your back so it stays in the center more. With a low bar squat, because it's lower down your back, it's closer to the hip hinge, which is what gives you so much more leverage in that lift. Um, you actually have to sit your butt back a little bit on top of some forward knee travel, of course, to keep the bar over the center of your gravity. If you try to keep the hips underneath you with the bar that far down your back, you're gonna end up losing balance and your hips will end up shooting up inevitably because you're just not in a position to raise that bar up. That's why every time you see a powerlifter doing a low bar squat, and a beginner who doesn't know about weightlifting watches it, they, they make fun of it and call it a good morning, but it's just simply how the lift is. It requires more posterior chain than a high bar squat. So with a box squat, it forces you to do that. You can't keep your hips underneath you, rest all that weight on the, on the box, and then try to blast back up. You'll, you'll be a mess. You'll go loose and lose your technique and form immediately. So it forces you to sit back. And it forces you to stay really tight because you can't go loose when you hit that box. That's also detrimental. So you have to stay really tight in the core and break at the hips and load that posterior chain. And uh, after like three sessions of doing these, it makes the 500 pound squat feel even better. Pretty damn good, considering I'm getting lighter each week I do this. I tilted a little bit to my left side, I don't know if you caught that, I like, tilted on my left leg a little bit, so I lost a little bit of balance. I don't know if I unracked it unevenly or something like that, but um, I managed to correct it midway up and felt pretty damn good. May do this for like one, maybe two more weeks tops, but as I'm getting lighter and lighter and lighter, it's definitely gonna have an effect on strength. Ooh, the leg day pump is real. Hell yeah. Oh my God, I can't even ab vacuum right now because my abs are too sore. <laughs> Let me try it one more time. It really it does not feel good. Got a little bit right there, but hell yeah, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's starting to come together and uh, this week should really kick things off, but Hell of a leg pump, they feel full as hell right now. So sick. So post-workout, we headed to the old beach house again, and it's a really sad sight to see. Uh, my grandparents have officially boarded it up, locked it up, securityed it up, and uh, they're officially back up in New Hampshire now for the whole rest of the year. The summer house is closed, so like the patio with all the chairs is now empty. Uh, the rack that had all the towels on it and the water shoes underneath it all the time is put away. Everything's closed up and barren. It's kind of sad. It's it's uh it's not even sunny out. It's like really the summer saying goodbye to us. It's still warm and humid out, so I'm gonna jump in the water one last time this year. Maybe maybe we might get two more times. This is the only thing not locked up. They have a decked out security in this house for obvious reasons, so I can't get into the house. But this is still available. It's a fifteen dollar thing. <laughs> Ooh. 
Nailed it! What the hell? When were you gonna tell me that Terry Silver was back in town, Taj? I haven't told you anything until this very minute. You see that, Taj? I, I don't know if I can fucking believe you. Are you breaking team, huh? Is that what you're trying to do here? Are you kidding me? It is cardio time. So really cool announcement, a cool idea I had, I want to share with you guys. Those of you who have downloaded my bench press guide, write the big bench book in the inbox below. Whatever bench PRs that book helps you to hit, whether it's a one rep max, a 10 rep max, variation PR, anything you're proud of that that book helped you to reach, send me the video of that PR and I'm going to share it in one of my own videos right here on YouTube. And I'll tag your name or your Instagram or whatever you want tagged in it. I'm down to do that too. All right, so today's the day we're finally doing it, man. We are signing back up at my very first gym I ever stepped foot in ever when I was like 12 years old. This is the first gym I found out I could bench 65 pounds at for one and then fail at the second attempt at 14 years old. <laughs> this is the YMCA West Bay, North Kingstown. This was the gym that was in the vault series with those crazy orange walls. This is the gym that I did that photo shoot for the Providence Journal in. Um, this gym was featured quickly in that Eating Big series that uh, that predated the Vault series. And this is where it all started. So whenever I come back here, I tried three different trials out, three different day passes out over the last three weeks just to make sure I definitely liked it. Every time I come back, man, I get thrown into that old nostalgia of when I used to be obsessed with bodybuilding. And I just find myself putting in crazy amounts of work here and just so focused on the actual workout and even doing cardio afterwards and it doesn't feel like a chore. I think it was just, there was so many years of hardcore bodybuilding here that it's just like this environment, this specific building, being back inside of it puts me back into that mindset, which is awesome. I love, obviously, the hardcore gyms that I train at. I get gym ADD, man. I get really bored with the same environment for more than like three days in a row. So I have to constantly switch up gyms. So I currently go to four gyms now. This is my fourth gym. This is the only one I'm paying for. Um, and I probably will only go here maybe just one or two days out of the week. But it'll just be a cool way to switch things up and make sure at least one day out of the week I, uh, I get an old school classic bodybuilding workout in. Granted, all my training is gonna be for hypertrophy. <laughs> So focused on myself If I don't hit you up Then you don't benefit my wealth And holding on to shit I've been just clearing it on my shelf I ain't bad on negative vibes Trying to bring that over here Bitch, you getting repelled Got to work on my health I've been working like crazy Man, I do it 9 to 5 Then I write on the daily Hope this music will save me Thank you all that have listened Y'all been pushing me closer To get a view of my vision See me just doing decision Cutting right through the game Making a path I'm passing all the people that hate Taking flights to the state Taking flights to the country Since a year of working hard Now it's done with the money High school, they got me a dummy music they try to take from me I'm making more than my teachers And I just started my 20s Never forget where I'm from I'm so thankful it helped Keep on rolling with the punches Till I'm wearing that belt Y'all in the backseat I'm in the front Come with the drive Run until we break down Yeah, all of these lanes Ain't getting no love Only show up When the money come round Yeah, swerving through lanes I ain't giving no fuck Quarter past five And she need a ride So day today? Yeah, what is the day today? 17th 17th so check it out, man. It is crunch time now. 
time to really get serious. I want to be shredded by November. So we're diving in deeper into this diet, cutting calories down to 2250 all week long with one day that is 2,500, so very low calories. Uh, and we switched up the meals, very organized meals now, so I'll, I'll show you exactly what I eat all day long, every day. Okay, so meal number one is post-workout, and that is a whey isolate, just one scoop. Isolate is simply whey protein, with the lactose stripped away pretty much, so it's a little bit leaner. You get a little bit less quality in the protein because of that, but it's kind of splitting here, it should be all right. So one scoop of that with one serving of fiber, which is 3.4 grams of psyllium husk. And we're down the protein shake first things first. Now, we kicked the fruit smoothies to the curb for now because they just take up way too many carbs and calories when I'm on such low carbs and calories already. So if I have a, a shake, it's like I'll be starving for the rest of the day. So I'm switching over to rice again, which I actually love, it's very fulfilling. Still keeping a yogurt in the mix though, because I love my light and fit, especially with the fruit in the bottom. Ooh, they're just delicious. So I throw in one of these bad boys for fun, post-workout. And then I top it off with 28 grams of lightly salted almonds. And it's amazing. And the key is to eat them one by one to really savor them. When you're dieting, it's little sugar cups, I swear. So I sit down, watch some random ass YouTube videos, Pick at these, and then go hit the shower. Meal number two is being had at about 5 p.m. And this has 158 grams of rice in it. This is uh, long grain enriched white rice. Six ounces of boneless, skinless chicken breast, slow cooked in the crock pot. So it breaks apart all nice like that, it's not dry. Four ounces of plain Pan cooked asparagus. I didn't cook this in any oil or anything like that. I would have baked it, but I'm out of tin foil, so I just rolled with what I had. And I'll probably be switching to green beans a lot, actually, because you can buy more of them for less money. Asparagus is kind of expensive. Four ounces on the dot, and that's the last of it. That's perfect. Topped with two pieces of Kraft Singles cheese melted in the microwave. The cheese gives it a, a nice texture, and then you just add... Um, some mustard, one to two tablespoons, track it, and mustard's virtually calorie free, which is really nice. You stir that all up, and it actually tastes really damn good, especially if you've been dieting for a while and you're already kind of desensitized. So we have three meals left throughout the night, and I make them stretch until pretty much midnight because I stay up kind of late. So because I need to get this video edited, rendered, and uploaded tonight for tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the next three meals for the rest of this evening right now and show you guys what they are ahead of time. Meal three is gonna be very, very similar and it will be had around eight or 9 p.m. So it's 175 grams of rice, so a little bit more rice. Another six ounces of boneless, skinless chicken breast yet again. Another two slices of Kraft Singles. And there will be a point where we'll probably end up cutting the crafts out, but for now, if you can track it, it works. Douse yet again with another tablespoon of yellow mustard after it's been heated up, so that will come later on. The only difference is we're adding two cups of lettuce to this. And I've graduated to uh, romaine lettuce because unlike bitter ass, boring ass iceberg lettuce, romaine's actually smooth as hell and it has a little bit of taste to it. It's not bad. like. I just take this and I munch on it plain like popcorn. I don't even mix, there's probably so many cool recipes and arrangements you could do, but honestly, I eat my whole meal, then I just grab the bowl of my two cups here, and I just eat it like popcorn, and it does the trick. Meal four, which will be had around 11, perhaps as late as midnight, is an old classic you should all be familiar with now. Two patties, consisting of 85%, 15% lean beef, 5.5 ounces of it, with two more slices of Kraft Singles, about 40 grams of guacamole measured out on top, which is extremely low calories, complemented with another two cups of that herbivoric splendor, mo lettuce. For anyone scratching their head about the Kraft Singles, because <laughs> they're a little bit untraditional with diets, they're only <clears throat> four grams of fat, no trans fat, which is phenomenal, 200 milligrams of sodium and only two grams of carbs. Okay, so it's not the most healthy thing in the world, but 
such a small amount overall. And like I said, we'll end up uh, weeding them out as the diet continues, but if you can track it, you can get shredded on it. My very last meal of the night is simply one scoop of MTS whey protein, and it is measured out to the gram, but Mark Low Blender does a really good job of actually making his scoops incredibly accurate. I've weighed them out on the scale, and a full scoop right to the top is exactly what it says in grams on the bucket, which is amazing. And a little trick just to make it feel like you're having some dessert is instead of putting it in a shaker and drinking it, put the powder in a bowl, add just a dash of water, less is more. The second you get too much water in there, it just becomes too liquidy and there's no going back. And it turns into like this pudding texture and it's just amazing, especially with a good way. If you have a crap way or even just a regular way, it tastes kind of proteiny, but with like MTS way, oh. If you've had MTS, you know what I'm talking about. Blows, shits on any brand. Name your favorite brand of whey protein. MTS shits on it. So, it's like dessert for real. Ooh. And that brings us to a grand total of 2,250 calories. That's 225 grams of protein, 150 Gs of carbohydrates, 83 and a half grams of fat, 25 grams of fiber. Things are getting serious. I like it. All right, I'll wrap this video up with the question of the video. I told you in the last video, I'm gonna start selecting one question from the comment section of every single video and answering it. So here we go, this is from the last video. An amazing question, awesome question, by Rob P who asks, I can't remember hearing you discuss getting hyped up from music, etc., before training, but a lot of coaches recommend making sure you don't so that you're training from a neutral state of mind. I always used to listen to a particular song before training to get myself in the zone, to an extent even force myself to get emotional and angry, but I've realized that it may be detrimental over time. What's your take on this? Do you purposely keep yourself calm before most training sessions? Yes, 100%, to the point where I'll actually make sure I listen to calming music like driving up to the gym or like a creepypasta or a podcast, not anything hyped up, just to keep my mind nice and neutral leading up to the gym. But here's the thing, I used to be that lifter that would get overly hyped up and aggressive before a lift because big weight is intimidating, you get nervous looking at it. So the way to counter it is to get aggressive, right? So I was that lifter who would pace around, put on headphones, put on a PR song every single time, smell the smelling salts, grunt, roar, yell, scream, do the foot stomp before a squat, everything I could to uh, just blast those nerves away from me. It works sometimes without a doubt. Sometimes it gets your adrenaline flowing, but there's three huge issues with it. One, a lot of times it's not true confidence. Two, it leads to throwing away your form when you need it the most. And three, you train yourself to fail and become really inconsistent with hitting heavyweights. I'll explain, I'll try to keep it quick. The first one is not real confidence. So sometimes you can successfully psych yourself up into being aggressive and get really confident and mad at it and it, it is real confidence and it works. But sometimes, most of you can relate I'm sure, you'll be sitting there looking at this intimidating, scary ass looking weight racked up in the bar like that's a fuck ton of weight, holy shit. And so you sit there trying to like, I'm a savage, I'm gonna kill it, like trying to mind trick yourself into being hyped up and angry and aggressive towards it. And if you really kind of stop and think about it, you're not any more confident. You're just trying to like project anger and aggression at this thing you're still terrified of. So when you actually get under the weight, it's like you're angry, but you're scared to death and angry now. You didn't actually achieve confidence. So that's something you gotta look out for. It's, nothing's more cringy than when you see somebody getting hyped up, yelling and screaming, and they jam themselves under the bar, and they walk out, and they're shaking, and they just fail like faster than, <laughs> it's, it sucks. The second thing is, it leads to you throwing your form out the window. This was pretty self-explanatory. How many times do you see somebody using perfect form, slow controlled negative, controlled pause, exploding, when they're benching all the way up to their top set and they get to that top PR attempt and they just hail mirror it. They're like, fuck it, drop it down as fast as they can because they gotta try to bounce it off the bottom because of how heavy it looks and feels. And they just go totally loose and the bar doesn't land in the correct area and they just miss the lift completely. So you throw your form away when you get hyped up like that, when you lose your, your groundedness. And third, and finally, you train yourself to become really inconsistent because there might be some days where you just got the perfect amount of sleep and you're well rested and you can tap into that adrenaline. You can tap into that angry, raging, crazy side of you successfully. You can execute beautifully under that. But not every day. There are gonna be some days where you just didn't get enough sleep or you overslept or whatever the reason may be, you have a cold and you just cannot tap into that side of you. Now what do you do? 
you already mentally just failed the lift because you're like, shit, if I can't get myself hyped up into the psycho state, I can't hit this weight. And now you're not gonna hit it because you can't even believe you hit it. You have no confidence. It goes back to that confidence thing. Whereas nowadays, like I go into the gym, I stay very grounded and very controlled. And even if I'm feeling groggy and I can't snap into that crazy adrenaline state, I let my autopilot take care of it. I'm like, hey, I can execute this fucking weight no matter what. I don't need to be in any sort of state. So I've squatted before, I'm gonna squat it again. Here we go. That's my mentality now. And that's why I consistently hit big numbers and rarely ever fail. And I don't need to get hooked up for it anymore. So those are like the three big reasons why you should try to stay grounded. You're still gonna be hyped up. I mean, I'm still focused. I have laser focus going on. My adrenaline's still spiked. When I do a PR, it's just I'm in control of myself and I, I, I execute. 